Thank you. I am a grateful beyond words that I can stand before you today and say that one of our deputies has already been released from the hospital and the other is expected to be released later today. Our deputies put themselves in harm's way each and every day facing unknown circumstances. And I'm so thankful that both of our deputies survived today's potentially fatal encounter. Around 7 a.m. this morning, a deputy who is a field training officer with 10 years of experience with the Clackamas County Sheriff's Office and a recruit deputy in training were dispatched to a report of a burglary in progress at a business in the area of 70th Avenue and Southeast Johnson Creek Boulevard in unincorporated Clackamas County. The deputies arrived and located two males on the scene. While the deputies were contacting them, one of the suspects drew a pistol and began shooting at them. One deputy was struck in the arm and the other deputy was struck in their ballistic vest and in their abdomen. At least one of the deputies returned fire and neither of the suspects were shot. Other deputies responding to the call were able to take the two suspects into custody and quickly administer first aid to both of our deputies. In accordance with standard protocol, the investigation is being led by the Clackamas County Interagency Major Crimes Team in collaboration with the Clackamas County District Attorney's Office. Detectives from Oregon City and the Westland Police Departments are leading the Major Crimes Team investigation with assistance from Canby Police, Lake Oswego Police, Gladstone Police, Malala Police, the Oregon State Police, the FBI, and the ATF. The investigation is ongoing and further information regarding the investigation will be released by the Clackamas County District Attorney's Office. I wanna thank everyone who responded to the scene and our fellow law enforcement agencies, American Medical Response, and the amazing staff here at uh, OHSU and our community for their outpouring of support. Thank you. I'll turn it now over to Dr. Zonis and he'll answer some questions. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is David Zonis. I am uh, the, one of the Associate Chief Medical Officers for OHSU Health System and a trauma surgeon here at OHSU. Uh, earlier this morning, as you heard, there were two uh, sheriff's deputies who were admitted to our trauma center um, after um, sustaining ballistic uh, gunshots. Uh, they entered the trauma system. Uh, they were treated in our emergency department. Uh, I'm happy to report that one of the sheriff's deputies um, who uh, sustained an injury, it was a ballistic injury to his, uh, to his pelvic bone, uh, resulting in a fracture uh, and to his flank um, has already been discharged from from the trauma center um, so he's um, we're really pleased that he'll be making a full recovery uh, the second sheriff's deputy um, sustained uh, an injury a, a ballistic injury to his left uh, upper arm um, resulting in a in a ballistic fracture uh, and he is uh, currently still in our trauma center but he's um, in good condition um, and we're just actively monitoring him and we anticipate that hopefully in the next uh, day or so, he should also be released with hopefully a very good recovery. OHSU is very proud to have cared for these two sheriff's deputies. We have a phenomenal trauma system. Uh, we are one of only two trauma centers um, in the Portland metropolitan area that can manage um, major trauma injury. Our system worked the way it was intended to. We were able to rapidly care for both of these deputies and, um, and, and, and uh, be able to manage and care for them so that they can have a successful uh, outcome. With that, um, I'd be happy to take any uh, questions specific to this. Yeah. So uh, we have uh, a team of nurses, physicians, respiratory therapists, pharmacists. It's a uh, trauma systems are, are a very um, involved system of care. All of those individuals coalesce and arrive to receive the patient. And that entire team was is ready 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Uh, and they were there uh, to receive uh, both deputies. Yes.
Uh, so within, so we're, we're always present and available and ready to receive patients 24 hours a day. We immediately assess the patients from the time they come off of the ambulance. Uh, and, you know, honestly, the, the, the trauma system begins even before the patient arrives to the trauma center. And so we really have to commend the excellent work of our pre-hospital providers who assess patients, make a decision that this patient needs to go to a major trauma center, and then we're there to receive them. Once they enter our system, our trauma surgeons, nurses, emergency physicians uh, make these decisions within minutes. And so from there, we make decisions whether someone needs an operation, um, whether they need a special intervention, and then we have all of the other complex support services um, that can only exist at major centers, special radiologists, special proceduralists, um, orthopedic surgeons, everybody responds within minutes to assess that patient to give the best possible outcome. Yeah, so bullets are, are funny things. They, they don't go in straight lines. And so as, once they leave, uh, uh, once they leave the, the firearm, they tumble, they bounce, and when they hit an object, they continue to bounce as well. And so bullets can really either go in sometimes straight, but typically in, in um, off angles. And so uh, this particular injury, uh, you know, the deputy was quite lucky, one, that he was wearing protective uh, armor. And then secondly, um, that, you know, the injury, although it did fracture his uh, pelvis, was just millimeters away from, you know, his internal organs. Um, which would have led to a really a, a very different path, requiring emergency surgery and uh, a much potentially a much different outcome. I'm only aware of uh, of the injuries that we see at the time. Uh, I can't speak to um, this, the specifics around that. Um, just the injuries that we identify.